You know, it's crazy because I'm, I'm from the Bronx and mm -hmm. uh, hip hop has been part of my DNA since birth, damn near. Yeah. Um, but you got to give it to Queens. I'm sitting here listening to you and you're talking about early rappers that dominated the game. We didn't even yeah. get to the era. Like you touched on the the uh Capone and Noriegas. We didn't even get to you know, 50 and, 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 and so many of the other legends that then came out like Queens, it is something in that water. I mean you could have even went backwards and 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 run run DMC and yeah yeah it's Queens is bananas when it comes to rappers. I think between Brooklyn and Queens, I think Brooklyn, Brooklyn is, is well, I know why, I think I know why about Brooklyn, but with Queens, Queens is the, outside of Staten Island, and then, you know, Wu-Tang fixed that, but outside <laughs> of Staten Island, Queens was the last people looked at. Yes, I yes. Think, I think as Queens cats, when we would go uptown, and we, you know, we go into Harlem, we go uptown, we go into the Bronx, and even sometimes we go into Brooklyn. We were the, almost the targets. So it's like, nah, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, I think, and, and to move further into time, I think that's why the South dominates so much because they were the last to be looked at. So when you're the last to be looked at, you're trying to get first in line. And so, so, so I think the mentality, I think the, the subconscious mentality of Queens rappers was you're going to see us and, and you're going to see us in, in the biggest way you possibly can, because it seems like it's a given when you think hip hop, you'd say Bronx, Harlem, hip hop, yep. you know, us Queens kids, you know, me being me being at, at the Rucker in 85 or, or you know what I'm saying? It's like an unheard of thing. Most Queens kids wouldn't even think about going into Harlem for anything. Yo, there's a party at PS whatever, whatever, I'm going. And they're like, you going? I'm like, yeah, I'm going. I got friends in Harlem, you know, so so or or the Bronx and and so it's like I think it's like that. It's like a proving ground. It's like you have to, you really want to prove it. No, you know, I, I sat down with Search, um, and he's yeah. another one I can mention. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even bring his name up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I asked Search a similar question, and he had the exact same answer. You know, just phrased it a little differently, but he's like, yo, you know, we were kind of overlooked. So we, we really had to go out there and prove ourselves. And that was the mentality of so many of them artists that came up out of Queens, obviously, because y'all came and y'all came with it hard, like it and, and, and yeah. still continue to produce great talent. Um, you know something? You you play actual instruments, correct? Yes. Okay, so you you at the time that um you came out, you you were known as a rapper, but you produced more than half of your album. Did, all of them. I did all, 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 all of them. All of the first album? Yes. Okay. By default, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go into that. I just wanted to dig in a mindset at this point. Because on the West Coast, Dre was doing his thing. But it yeah. wasn't as common as it is today to, to be a producer and an artist. Did you see yourself more as an artist, as a producer, or did you just produce by default because you wanted to be an artist and didn't have nobody to make beats. My, 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 um, my touchstones, my, my, my artistic touchstones was Stevie Wonder and Prince, right? So as a kid, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm a studier. I study, like I study music. So I'm buying Prince albums. I'm buying so Jack and my mom's old Stevie Wonder albums. And on the back, it says produced, performed, produced, arranged, and composed by Prince, yep. Stevie Wonder. So in my mind, that's what you're supposed to do. Because my introduction to it was artists like that. And I always gravitated toward artists that did that, pre-rap. 
So when somebody would tell me, oh, no, he don't write his songs. Or, oh, no, he don't play the music. In my brain, I'm like, for real? Like, what? You just, who does it? And, you know, and then you start. So so the idea of a producer was never in my head. The, the, the functionality of a producer. Yeah, you start, I think, if you don't know what a producer is, you start knowing what a producer is because Quincy Jones did Thriller and you're like, okay, that's a producer. So, you know, if you're not really seeing or figuring it out, figuring it out. And even then it was like, okay, but Michael Jackson writes the songs. So it's like, so I thought, you know, most of them he did, but some of them he didn't. And so I'm looking at all these, these icons out there. You, it could be anybody, anybody. If, if you're looking at 70s music up to mid 80s music, there was a musicality in almost every artist. Yes. You know, yeah. whether it's pop, whether it's R and B, you know, I, I grew up in a jazz household. So every single artist my father played wrote and played their music. You know, it was just a, a thing. Um, you know, and on and on the other side, like I said, my mom was a super Stevie Wonder head. So it's like, you know, so it's like that's what I'm exposed to. And then when hip hop comes along, as a kid, I'm just like, how is this getting made? Like, I don't understand it. Like, I know, like in my mind, I don't know what a Lin drum looks like, or I don't know what a, uh, you know, any of these drum machines look like. I know turntables. I know how that goes down um, because that's what we see. We go to the park as DJs, but the, the actual record making of hip hop boggled my mind. And the first my first exposure to hip hop is the very first exposure to hip hop, which is like Sugar Hill Gang, Furious Five, where they're playing instruments. It's a band playing these records. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, it sounds like it's a real band. I'm, I'm, and so as I evolve, and I, then now I'm 16, 15, 16, and I know what things are and everything. I'm like, well, I guess, you know, now I got to do that and my exposure to equipment like that was through herbie like herbie had all the equipment first herbie had the 808 he had you know a dx drum machine he was the first one to have the sampling sp12 drum machine so honestly you know i i, I tell the story from time to time when herbie would go on tour i would steal his equipment like <laughs> no no lie we'd sneak in his room i would jack the 808 jack the, the the sp or whatever and teach myself how to use it so when it was time to when it was time to um go into the studio and rock out i knew the records i wanted to sample i knew everything that i wanted to do and and actually the first album was made as a demo um herbie's little brother had a girlfriend and her mother was in the industry and the mother told me about this studio in queens and I went to the studio and um, the only time I can get is weird. I went to the studio, I asked him, how much time can I get for this amount of money? I dumped money on the table because <laughs> I work. I was working at a sea town and I stacked up my checks and it was like, I don't know. I don't know. It could have been $100 for all I know. And he was like, well, I can give you eight hours on Christmas. Like what? <laughs> and it was Christmas morning, midnight, December 25th to 8 a.m. December 25th. I was like, I'll take it. And and I went and I knocked out six of the eight cuts that are on my first album. So that was, I figured I was, I was supposed oh, to- Hold on, within those eight hours? Yeah, yeah, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Are you serious? Yeah, I had the rhymes memorized. I knew what I wanted to do. I was there to work, man. I was, I figured this is the only time I'm gonna ever get. So I had did to you knock have, it out. Did you have the beats made? Ahead of time? No, no, I made them. I made them. I knew exactly. I was like, look, I ain't got no time to play. Line it up. You know? <laughs> so you made the beats, laid the vocals in a eight, in six of those cuts in an eight-hour period. Yes. Yes. Oh, my god! I don't even know how I did it because I think about it now, just like recording now, and I'm like, how the hell did I do that? <laughs> I, I don't even know. Like, I did it, and and um, I brought that demo to Herbie. And Herbie was like, I can get a deal with this. And he went and got, he actually got two deals. It was weird. 
I'm, I know I'm all over the place with it, but it was real weird. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.